Yes, as a matter of fact, I mentioned this to the uh, president today. And uh, I, I think that's very much a possibility. Uh, for example, on the International Space Station right now, we have several international astronauts, in addition to having Russian cosmonauts and American astronauts, that we built the station together and we operate it together. Uh, so I think it's very uh, possible to have a Colombian astronaut in the future. Well, uh, we are certainly uh, very interested in cooperating with uh, Colombian Space Agency if that's what the government of Colombia decides it's going to do. Uh, without a space agency, we already uh, do so many things together. Uh, but, for example, you've got a couple of communication satellites. There are going to be need for additional ones in the future. Uh, that's something uh, with collaboration with NASA that we can do. And if the government decides that it wants to have a space agency, we'll work with them. Yes, it was a concern to me when I looked at the Amazon from the window of our spacecraft 37 years ago when I flew in space in January of 1986 and I could see the destruction of the rainforest with the naked eye by seeing the color contrast. And then in the same window, I could look to the east to the mouth of the Amazon and I could see the result of the destruction of the trees upriver because at the mouth of the Amazon, the silt or dirt was discoloring the waters of the Atlantic for hundreds of miles. I became more of an environmentalist when I flew in space and looked at Earth. It's so fragile, it's so beautiful, but it's so fragile. And I want, as a result of that experience, I said to myself, I want to be a better steward of our planet. That's why I think these scientific instruments in space are so important to us Earthlings here on Earth to better take care of our resources like the Amazon. Well, uh, I think Artemis II will be on time. That will be uh, next year, and it will be late next year. Uh, and Artemis II, the crew has been named. It's crew of four. Uh, it's an international crew with a Canadian astronaut. And it uh, is a very diverse crew. Uh, we have a commander, a uh, former head of the astronaut office. We have a pilot that's an African-American astronaut that's flown several times. And then we have a woman engineer who has the record for more spacewalks than any other woman. And so it's a very diverse crew. Uh, we go back to the moon in a different way with international partners. Uh, when we land on Artemis III, which should be a year, year and a half after Artemis II, so that will be late 25 or 26, and uh, when we land, we will land with a commercial lander built by SpaceX, followed on by another lander later built by Blue Origin. So we go with commercial partners as well. And when we land on the moon in 25 or 26, then it will be a crew of two of the four Two will go down, and the first woman and the next man will walk on the moon. And that uh, program also will have uh, the first person of color that will walk on the moon on one of the uh, missions. Maybe that one, maybe a subsequent one. Well, it will be with India. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to uh, train an Indian astronaut and fly the Indian astronaut next year. 
Uh, and uh, so we are uh, in partnership. We've got a major science mission that's going to launch in January that uh, is between the U.S. and India. Uh, and it's very uh, important in the observation of Earth for such things as the Amazon. The one country that we have not had cooperation with is China because they are very secretive. They will not tell you anything. I have talked to the uh, Chinese ambassador who then became the foreign minister and by the way, he just recently uh, got fired. And uh, I have talked to him about cooperation, but it's, it's nothing. That's why we're going back to the moon with international missions, with international astronauts. That's why we go ahead of humans with scientific uh, instruments that are international instruments, not just uh, American instruments. And it's very important that the moon be a resource for all people. Well, um, I did something about this. Uh, a year ago, I appointed a distinguished panel of scientists uh, to look at the few, it's, it's just a few instances of observations that we don't know what it is, and to report next month. So stay tuned, we'll, we'll see what they say. Now, if your question is what I think about the fellow that testified last week, yes. well, let me ask you, uh, if someone told you that he has a friend that has an alien spacecraft that is large as a football field stored in a warehouse, uh, do you believe that? <laughs> no, I don't believe that. Uh, or that he has alien parts of aliens no, I don't believe that. Okay, now that's a different question. Yeah. <laughs> that's a different question from UAPs. So NASA has a charter, it's in statute, that we are to look for life. And we're looking for life. We're digging on Mars right now. Uh, core samples that are about that big in titanium tubes and eventually we'll get them and return them to Earth in that dry lake bed to see if there's any, any evidence of life there. Uh, we are constantly looking in the heavens and searching for any uh, intelligence, uh, intelligent message. Uh, and uh, so here's the question I ask of our scientists. Since we know that the universe is so big, we know the universe started 13.8 billion years ago. We are now getting pictures from the James Webb Space Telescope that go back as far as 13 and a half billion years ago in the formation of the first galaxies. So think about this, light travels at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. That light that we're capturing now has been traveling for 13 and a half billion years. That's a big space. So, I ask our scientists, what is the mathematical probability in a universe that big, by the way, a universe that's expanding, what is the mathematical probability that there's another Earth-like planet? Medium-sized sun, medium-sized stony planet, orbiting that sun, not too far, not too close, tilted on its axis, rotating with carbon, the chemicals for a habitable atmosphere. So, scientist, What's the mathematical probability? They said at least one trillion. So, 
if the mathematical probability is there's another Earth-like planet around a sun-like star, Okay. Do, do I think that there's life out there? Yes. Todo lo que usted quiere saber de Colombia y el mundo puede verlo a través del canal de YouTube del Tiempo. Suscríbase.